Good afternoon, everyone. How are we doing today? No? Great. That's what I like to hear. Thank you very much. We're here to talk about um, the Esri Map Visual inside of Microsoft's Power BI. How many folks here are familiar with that? That's what I like to hear. Excellent. Keep that in mind, Scott, Josh. Got a lot of people here. All right. So with that, let me. Um, my name is Arthur Haddad. I usually go by Art. Um, I work with the team that actually builds this out, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about it. I have 20 minutes, so I don't know how deep I can go, but I want to uh, just say it out loud. Our product team is actually here. They're in our booth at Esri, so if you want to go even deeper, they're here and we can talk to you. So let's get into it. How many people actually know who Esri is? Okay, for those of you who don't know who Esri is, we are the world leader in mapping and spatial analytic technology, and we have offices around the world, in over um, 100 offices around the world in over 60 countries. We've been building products since, believe it or not, um, well, the company was founded in 1969. We've been in existence for now 50 years, and our leading product is known as ArcGIS, hence, ArcGIS maps for Power BI. The map visual itself is in the box with Microsoft Power BI. There's nothing to install, nothing to go to the marketplace, download, or anything like that. It comes in the box. It's one of the things that we're trying to do with Microsoft and enable more spatial within Microsoft, and we're the spatial partner here with the Power BI team. It allows you to create great map visualizations. And I'm not just talking map visualizations, cartographically correct map visualizations with accurate representations of your data. We go even further and we give you ready use access to geographic content. Um, the free version has a certain amount, the plus version has more, and if you're an ArcGIS user, you have the wealth of information from the ArcGIS um, data holdings known as living atlas, boundaries, etc. Like I mentioned before, accuracy is important when you're doing your analysis, when you're reporting the results or telling the stories that your data is telling you, right? We need to be able to provide accurate representations of that information on a map. I'll get into some of those details in a minute. Of course, it's, it's like any other visual in Power BI, interactivity across the board. All your reports can interact with everything across the board with our visual. So let's talk about why Esri's location analytics enables even more. Let's talk about this just briefly here. Let's start with it's more than a map. It's not just a pretty picture. And I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not what you see on a map. It's what you can do with what you see on a map. The visualization represents the locations accurately, sure. But what about hey, I want to identify other areas that are performing as well as my top performing store. Or better yet, I have a supply chain in which I pay the truck drivers to send the containers from one facility to the other, from a port of call to a distribution facility. I pay them by the mile or by the kilometer, depending on where you're at in the world. Imagine working with the wrong coordinate system, I'll talk about that in a minute, which actually says, hey, you're actually paying this driver more than what he actually drove because the information I got is wrong. That's not a good thing. So again, it's what you can do with what you see on a map that's important. Analysis starts and ends with the data, but are you truly taking into account the spatial dimension? Everyone here understands when working with analytics, qualitative, quantitative, and temporal aspects of your data are critical to solving the problems that you're trying to answer with the data, which may or may not be coming from a collection source. It may be coming from sensor information, so you have a wealth of information at your hands. But how much of that is spatial? Or better yet, how are you accounting for that spatial dimension? All important things. Well, it's important to understand that the spatial dimension is yet another aspect of your data. You don't just have three aspects, strings, numbers, date, and time. You have four. The location dimension, or spatial. I use location and spatial interchangeably here. But more importantly, the world isn't flat. Hate to admit it, it's kind of round, right? And, but the screen that you're looking at is flat. 
whether it's 2D or a 3D representation, it's flat. How do you take this big round thing, flatten it out, and actually do proper math against it? A good friend of mine, she used to be a professor at Imperial College in London, she told me once that when she taught this stuff, the way that they'd explain it is by taking an orange, peeling the orange, and now try to flatten that orange peel without ripping it. You can't do it. Now at least get an accurate uh, flat representation of it. Coordinate systems are important. So which one is the right one? There's a lot of detail associated with the coordinate systems. And quite honestly, there's well over 6,000 coordinate systems available. So how do I do proper analysis with the spatial dimension without understanding that coordinate system aspect? That prime example of paying the driver too much because you're stretching the map and you're actually doing too much is pivotal to understanding that. So just know that there's 6,000 plus coordinate systems out there, ways in which major institutions, people like the NGA, for example, or the other government agency I can't even talk about, they actually use these coordinate systems in ways, and then somehow other places use the same coordinate system. So if it's not the same as what you're looking at on your Bing map or your Google map, how are you going to transform all that into the right place? It's kind of hard. So this is leading towards the accuracy of spatial information. Another thing that people don't realize is that location is ubiquitous. I think James Phillips actually said that this morning. Location data is everywhere. Data itself is coming from everywhere. And oh yeah, it's got a coordinate associated with it. But what if I don't have coordinates? Is your data still locatable on a map? I would argue that yes, it is. Think about this. Sales territories, regions, areas of interest, census block data down to the track level, administrative boundaries in general. Your data has some element of location information. Imagine being able to take any one of those elements, whether it's represented as a point, line, or a polygon, and representing that on the map to take you to that next level with the spatial dimension. Our map visual enables things like this, and so does Esri at large. What about access to data that you need that you didn't know you need? For instance, back to that supply chain information. A ship goes from China to a port in Seattle. Right? I need to estimate how long it's going to take to get here. Of course, they're going to give you some information, but what if you had ocean information on the currents, weather information on the patterns of storms that, that that ship's going to get to. And then once it gets to the port of call, how long is it going to take to get to the distribution facilities with that container? All of that requires additional information that you may or may not have, among a number of other scenarios. Esri has a wealth of this content the majority of which is authoritative coming from leading agencies that use our our platform and share that information back out to other geo agencies we make that available to you we also make available demographic and lifestyle data how many people need demographic information in their analysis oh come on you all do you know it well guess what we actually offer demographic and lifestyle data for over 120 countries around the world. In the US alone, we have 8,000 variables of US demographic data that we provide you. Dealing with the location element, we need to make it as simple as possible, and we hope that our map visual enables that. So let's dive in and see how all of this can be used. The best way to look at it is by actually seeing it, and because of the internet and everything, I decided to go with GIFs. Traditional Power BI dashboard. We're looking at um, distribution centers, tire stores on a dashboard, performance indicators, etc. This is your dashboard with a map. Not only does it show you the different regions of which you're working with, the distribution centers, but also the tire stores themselves. Not only the tire stores, but it's also based on sales. So the larger the point, the larger the sale, or the, uh, the sales within that store. But also, for that given area of interest, you notice we're showing the demographics for a one mile area around a given selection is showing the total population and it's dynamic on the fly. So as you move things around, 
you didn't have to know about how to do all this. All you needed to do is configure it to do all of that. I need my population data, great. I need my median household income, great, no problem. It'll show up as a card, and based on what you're looking at, it'll flip around. But how do you get this? Let's actually walk through that for a minute. Creating the map visual is easy. Just select it off the, the visualizations. It adds to the map. Add your coordinates to the field wells, latitude and longitude in this case here. Voila, that's really all it takes. Now, if you're using a base map, that's the background map, that's not Bing Maps or Google Maps. It's called Web Mercator. And you're using a UTM zone projection or even like in the Great Britain, the British National Grid, we'll adjust those coordinates to match whatever the base map is automatically. So over 6,000 projections are supported to provide accurate information. Changing that base map is easy. If you're signed in with ArcGIS, all of your organization's base maps exist and you can use them. Or use the ones that we've already provided out of the box for your use and change it. Changing the way the styling information is simple as well. Once you're in the edit mode of the, the visualization, you can change any aspect of that style to include classification types. Yes, classification types is not just a way to style the map. It's a form of analysis. How do you want to represent the information based on a classification method, which gives you even more information on what you're looking at on the map? This is now available, and it's free in the box. So start using it. What's this next one? Reference layers. I talked about additional data that you can augment your analysis with, your map with. We provide a wealth of demographic layers that you can simply add to the map. The demographic layers give you information about the areas that you're looking at down to the track level within the US and other administrative areas across the world. Whether or not it's the demographic layer or living atlas data, Living Atlas data is a wealth of information made available that's authoritative by nature, some curated by ESRI, others by our, our other authoritative agencies, as well as other information that's available in ArcGIS. Simply browse, find the one that you're looking at, whether it's railways, traffic patterns, um, weather information, ocean current information, anything is out there. All you got to do is point at it and use it. Infographics, if you remember that population data that was moving on the fly. That one right there. Again, just select the infographics, select the US demographics you want, or even world demographics if, if you have that level of subscription. Away you go. It'll add that information. And then you just simply show it. That's all it takes. And based on the area of interest, it will dynamically update because it's, well, we like to work smarter, not harder. So. Why not pass that along to you as well? Point, click, configure. That's really what we're talking about here with all of this information. It's really not a hard thing. And what we didn't want to do was introduce another visual that you had to learn how to do mapping with. What we wanted you to do was use a visual that enables you to do the things that you need. Ask the question, solve the problem without having to relearn a new way of doing something. So we're trying to evolve this even further with analysis. Drive times is a prime example of that. And I'm not just talking about drive times. Maybe it could be walk time, transit time, things of that nature. So you have to consider analysis. I want to be able to specify an area of interest, show me a 20-minute drive time around it, away I go. But maybe that's not enough. OK, so now I know how far it takes to get there. And that's important, for instance, a retail scenario, where I know my customers are willing to drive no more than 10 or 15 minutes to my store. If not, I better find another brick and mortar and put it somewhere where they will be. Right? That's important. But what about for a given store that's performing really well, show me other similar stores that are doing the same thing? or that are poor, performing poorly, show me the similar stores that are doing the same thing. So selecting it, clicking a button, bam. Now you have that information. And all of that, again, is interactive with all the other visuals that you have within your report or dashboard. 
point click configure. That's really what we're trying to do here with our Master Power BI Visual. Make sense so far? Kind of looks fairly simple, easy. Guess what? It is. Just got to go out there, push it, put it on your map, add the correct information, and away you go. All right. And there's so much more here. But again, I've got 20 minutes. They're going to kick me off if I go beyond. So we'll go with that. Um, we'll answer questions just towards the end, if you don't mind. Three ways to get ArcGIS Maps for Power BI. One in the box, and it's free, and it has so much in there that there's a lot you can do with it. Whether it's the spatial analysis, heat maps, drive times, more, all that's available. Create map visualizations. We actually give you four different types of base maps that you can use. Ones that are really good for analysis, light gray uh, base map, the dark gray base map, depending on you like light or dark mode. Street map, open street map, all that is available. Um, access to the publicly available maps within the ArcGIS ecosystems, all that's available. You can search, you can add. And we, act, we actually provide you a number of US demographics free out of the box. Once you go up to the Plus subscription, you can buy it as an individual, or the organization can buy it collectively in bulk. Um, we make that available. Global demographics. This is over 120 countries worth of demographic and lifestyle information that's available to you um, as part of that um, simple subscription. Access to verified, ready-to-use, um, curated data with authoritative sources, all that's there. Um, more locations can be geocoded. About a million a month now. It goes up. Spatial analysis. Premium base maps are now available, so we give you even more types of visualizations for you for your map. It's not just the four basic, now you have more. And if you have an ArcGIS account, you get even more than that. Even more than that. This is kind of the breakdown. This is also available on the web. You know, I just noticed it's actually writing down everything that I say. That's really cool. Especially for me, I get progressive hearing loss as well, so that actually makes perfect sense. So um, base maps, geocoding, reference layers, infographics, access to ArcGIS. How many people here have ArcGIS Online? How about ArcGIS Enterprise? Cool. That's one of the key things that we want to be able to do in our road ahead. We want to provide not only access to ArcGIS Online, but also ArcGIS Enterprise. We're, we're actively working on this. We're jointly working on this between Microsoft and Esri to get those technologies working the way that we need them to. Um, so that's coming. We want better user experience integration. The key thing for us is familiar and non-disruptive. It needs to be familiar to you as a Power BI user, non-disruptive to you as a Power BI user, but at the same time familiar enough to an ArcGIS user. So there's that balance that we're trying to achieve with the Maps for Power BI visual, and away we go. Already mentioned ArcGIS Enterprise. That's coming, hopefully, um, by the end of the year. Again, a lot of uh, collaboration between Microsoft and Esri on that one. How many people want embedded reports with the Maps visual? I knew someone would throw their hand up. Yes. We're actually working on that as well. That should be coming by the end of the year, but. No promises, but we are actively working on that as well. Knew that was going to come up. Um, and of course, performance, performance, performance. It doesn't make sense if you got to push a button, go off for a cup of coffee, come back, and it might be done. You need to be able to push a button and see it as soon as possible. So we're constantly working on performance. We need to continue enhancing it, working on it, make it better, especially with larger data sets. We've done quite a bit since January of this year. We've improved the, the rendering of the information, the mapping and the, the panning and the zooming. Our vector layers are faster. Our operational layers are faster. The way we work with reference layers are a heck of a lot faster. But more importantly, the load time is also faster. Now under two seconds, the load time. So we're working on performance, and we're going to continue improving this with larger amounts of information. With the cube behind the scenes, we're working with larger information. So. With that, I think I hit my mark, maybe a minute early, but that's OK. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And keep in mind, our booth is right over there. Our product team is here, and we're willing to uh, talk some more in depth. Thank you. Yeah.